Hi and welcome to another tutorial for Photoshop. So today I'm using Photoshop 6, the beta, so if my UI looks a little bit different than yours, don't worry about it. It's um, generally speaking, most things are the same. I will point out um, things that might be different in your UI, but the techniques are all um, something that you can use with previous versions of Photoshop. Okay, so what I want to focus in on today is vignetting and doing professional vignettes. Now, I've seen most of the techniques out there, um, both online and amongst professionals. I've traded and swapped techniques with others. And essentially, I've narrowed this down to two particular techniques that I love to do for vignetting. They're the ones I used, use you know, 90, 95% of the time. The first technique is um, one that you would use for a photograph that requires um, really flexible vignetting, where you know there are multiple elements within the... Um, within the photograph that need to be highlighted and it doesn't follow kind of that traditional rectangle or elliptical shape um, that you might be familiar with with vignettes. So let's go ahead and start there and then we'll move on to the more common way of doing professional vignettes. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna do for this first technique is I wanna go ahead and create a curve adjustment layer. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And you can see here that I have the um, curve adjustment layer with the anchor points, um, one down here on the lower left and one up here on the upper right. Now, I have seen some um, uh, digital artists pull their um, anchor point from the left to create their darkened effect. Now, my experience is that that only works for about 10% of my photographs. I don't care for that most of the time. Sometimes it works fantastic, and so it's worth playing around with. But the majority of the time, what I do is I actually pull from the right-hand side, um, and I pull down to about the halfway mark or about the three-quarter mark. And in this particular photograph, I'm going to go about, you know, a, a little in between the halfway and three-quarter mark. And now the next thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead and create a layer mask. And, um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my brush tool and I'm going to make sure that I have a soft brush so that my hardness is turned all the way down and that'll give me a nice feathered effect around the edges of my brushes so that things blend really nicely. And then lastly, I just want to make sure that my foreground color is on black. And then once all that's done, I can... Um, basically just start painting in my vignette and so I'm going to go ahead and do that and my opacity is turned down too far so I'm going to go up to 100% and I'm going to start painting that back in and you can see right off the bat that it's starting to reveal the boat in a really nice subtle way And again, this is non-destructive, so if I um, maybe took a big swipe like that and I wasn't happy with it, I could just switch my foreground color back to um, white and then I could paint back over that and start over. And, you know, equally I can adjust my curve adjustment layer here to create, a, you know, a darker vignette or a lighter vignette, whatever it is that I'm, I'm going for. Um, and... So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to flip this back to black Oops. and I'm going to um, just uh, change my opacity down just a little bit um, so that I can kind of top off this area of the photograph. So now I have kind of a, um, a nicely vignetted image um, that is, uh, you know, it kind of moves from top to bottom and has, um, you know, my corners vignetted the way that uh, you would normally think of. So... I'm going to dial that in. The other thing you can do is you can, um, if you want to globally dial in your vignette, you can use the opacity on this layer and basically dial it down to whatever it is you want. So maybe I want to darken this a tad, but bring my opacity down at the global level. Okay, so that's essentially how that works. So I'm going to throw this layer adjustment, or this curve layer adjustment, away. And we're going to move to the second technique. So that's the first one. Works great for a lot of different photographs. Um, and this this is the second technique. And this is the one I use probably the most. I've created an action script for it, all that kind of stuff. Um, so what I want to do is, again, I want to create a curve adjustment layer. And I want to do the same thing with the anchor point on the right. I'm going to bring it down to about here. And this time, though, I'm going to grab my ellipt elliptical marquee. And you could use a rectangle if you preferred. It just kind of depends on the photograph, but I have a vertical um, photograph here, so I'm going to use the elliptical. 
and I'm going to create um, the elliptical marquee, or what Adobe calls the marching ants. And next, what I'm going to do is create a layer mask with it. And so I'm going to select the paint, uh, the paint bucket, and then make sure that my foreground color is black. And then I'm just going to drop it right there and unselect. Now, if I were to just leave it like that, it would look pretty ridiculous, obviously. But um, ever since about, uh, I think it was uh, CS4, and I know CS5 has it as well, um, <clears throat> Photoshop introduced a new control or a new um, panel um, that allows you to basically feather out um, your vignette here. So um, again, I'm using Photoshop 6, the beta, so I think the UI might be a little bit different, but essentially what you're looking for is, I believe, a tab up here called Masks or Properties um, like this one. Um, and then within uh, Photoshop 6, there's this little button here that you click. And it has this feather slider, and this essentially will allow you to um, add a feather effect to that vignette. And you can see it's already starting to soften, and then it gets really beautiful right there. So that's already looking um, pretty, pretty close to what I want. And the next thing that I love about this technique is you can actually move this vignette around and get it exactly how you want it placed. So if you click on your selection tool here, you can start to move it around. Um, until it's you know precisely where you want and um, the hat trick with this particular technique that I absolutely love is that this vignette can be scaled so it can it can be free transformed so you can either do a control T or you can go up to edit and say transform and scale or distort or skew whatever it is you want um, I'm gonna actually go with distort and I'm going to bring these upper points up like this and um, maybe bring them out just a tad to get a little bit more of the boat and then I'm going to double click so get, again it gives you a lot of flexibility to move this around and get it exactly how you want and then it, and then I can go in and I can change the feather a little bit more and um, if I need to uh, do anything else with the uh, mask I can go ahead and do that and like the other technique I can dial this in by sliding the opacity layer here um, sl or slider down to wherever it is that I want. I'd say about right there. So that's essentially the vignette that I would want this for this particular photograph. It's really nice. It's professional. And um, I, I, I think if you give this a try, add it to your own workflow, throw out your old way of doing this. I'm sure this is a much easier and, and will give you much better results. And I will see you at the next tutorial. Thanks.